Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. My name's Nick O'Leary, and today we're looking at, well, the Mercedes-Benz driving assistance package. Now, yes, I have covered this before, but it was quite a few years ago, and a lot can change in tech in a few years, especially when it comes to cars. Now, this here is the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, an S580e to be precise, so super luxurious. But the thing I'm focusing on today is the driving assistance package. Now, for those of you that don't know what it is, well, let me explain. Put simply, the driving assistance package is one of the most sophisticated things you can add to a car in terms of driving autonomy. Now, yes, this does of course vary around the world and not all features are available in every country, just like everything. So double check with Mercedes if you want to know the exact specifics on the car that you're looking at. That's probably the best thing I'd suggest. So, how does it work? Well, quite simply, on most modern Mercedes-Benz, it's actually located on the steering wheel just here. On some older Mercedes, it was like a stalk over on this side. But yes, you'll be paying attention very closely to these buttons here. And you'll notice on the top left here, this is how you control the distance to the car in front. Bottom left is active distance assist, more on that later. And limiter, how you toggle between the two. The set buttons are how you control the speed up and down. Uh, they'll go up in fives or in ones. Press the fives, swipe for ones. Then you've got a resume button and then a cancel button as well. A few things and quite a lot of functionality in literally just this very small rectangle on the steering wheel, but it does a lot, which you're about to see. So let's have a look at the main thing of why people want to choose the driving assistance package. So the main reason as to why you'll want to buy the driving assistance package is a thing called Active Distance Assist Distronic. I know, it's quite a mouthful. But the reason for this is because it's a bit like adaptive cruise you might have tried on a few other cars but Mercedes have this main feature it's halo feature and it's coupled with loads of other things and I'm going to try and show as many as I can off in this video basically everything in the driving assistance package that I can safely demonstrate on a public road there are some features in this toward the end of the video you'll understand ah that's why you can't demonstrate those but I'll explain how they work so Say I'm on the uh, kind of dual carriageway or motorway here at the moment, and I'm currently cruising along at a leisurely 60 miles an hour. Now, say that you wanted to, I don't know, just turn the cruise control on. This is what you can do here. You set the cruise control on, and now that's it set on. Now I'm gonna set it to 70, because that's the speed limit for this road. Now, all the other systems will also work in conjunction with this as well, but I'll touch on those in a minute. But this is the cool thing. This is active distance assist Distronic working to its best. So it's gonna stay at 70, but I'm actually starting to approach a car just around this corner here. And as I approach this car, what this car is going to do is use all the cameras and things on the outside. It's gonna find out that, ah, that car's not doing 70, so it's gonna to start to slow you down and quite literally match their speed. And this can do this for, you know, your really long dual carriageway or motorway drives and it could just really, really take the strain off motoring. So here we go in lifetime, currently doing 70, approaching this car. Now what this car is going to do very cleverly using the head-up display, it's gonna put a green bar, literally live in real time here, below that, I'm hoping this camera can capture it. There's a green bar there, and notice my speed has started to slow down now. So now I'm doing 65, 64 miles an hour, matching that car speed. Now, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake pedal here, which will cancel the whole thing, so this is how you cancel it, just because there is a roundabout coming up where I will actually need to come to a complete stop because I don't know if there's any cars coming. So, as I said, this whole thing is driving assistance. It does not drive for you. I'm gonna cover more about its limitations and kind of, you know, if you think about an autonomous car, this is all assistance-based systems. So let me just get around this roundabout and then we'll explain more about it. So, let me get back onto the uh, dual carriage right here, line up with this car, cruise control back on to 70 again. And now, same thing again. This car's gonna detect, ah, there's a car in front. It's gonna put this little green bar there on a head-up display. Now, you don't need a head-up display for this to work. It's just an extra feature for it to do. So yeah, I've set it, I want 70, but we're not doing 70. So that car's moved over now, and now it's detected, ah, the Morrison's truck. So now they're always limited to usually 56 or 60 or around that area for trucks, probably for fuel efficiency. So yeah, I, I'm not touching anything, literally. My, my legs are here, so um, all I'm doing is just steering at the moment. 
And there is method in my madness as well for my camera placement as well, because I can't quite easily put a camera in here because this car is so sophisticated, it's actually tracking the pupils of my eyes to make sure I'm actually paying attention to the road. Now with some newer multimedia systems as well, like this one, the MBUX NTG7, I didn't actually realize that when you adjust the dynamic select, so this is your uh, eco, comfort and sport modes, obviously this might vary depending on the car you have, it will also change how the car reacts in terms of certain situations. Basically, what it's gonna do, if you drive in a comfort mode, for example, it's actually going to smoothly get up to that speed, but put it in sport mode, it will do the opposite and get to that speed really, really quickly. Very, very clever. And this actually brings me very neatly onto the next thing. Now, pay attention here, this can happen very quickly. 70 on this road right now, okay, national speed limit. But we're approaching 40, and on the screen here it says upcoming 40 miles an hour, and the car has started to slow down all by itself. I haven't touched a thing. I still haven't touched the pedals, and we're now doing 40. Did you catch that? <laughs> so quickly. So the speed limit signs that literally state the different speed limit for the road, and it will change automatically for you as long as you've got it enabled in settings, of course. Now, I'm just gonna press the brake here to turn the system off, just because, again, there's a roundabout coming up. It cannot see to over on this side, so you uh, obviously need to take control on roundabouts, especially with oncoming cars onto roundabouts and that sort of thing. Now, as we go onto the dual carriageway again, I'm gonna resume its last speed. And if you remember, that last speed was 40, because it was just here a second ago, and it's already detected national speed limit and is already accelerating back up. Again, I haven't touched any controls, I've just hit resume, and it's automatically going to the speed limit for the road. Now, this is a thing called traffic sign assist, and in conjunction, active speed limit assist as well. So traffic sign assist is the one that actually reads the traffic signs on the road, so literally the speed limits that you see on the road. Then active speed limit assist is the one that can actually put that onto the active distance assist Distronic get all the wording right there <laughs> but basically uh, it will automatically adopt the speed limit now again you can turn this off and as always it is an assistant system so if it's really really sunny for example with lots of glare and you can barely see the car might not be able to see so same thing applies when it's like really really wet and rainy if it's difficult to actually see out and you know there's really really heavy rain the car might not be able to see those speeds so it might not work in in the way you're expecting so in which case you can turn these separate systems on or off now the next one after this is a thing called route based speed adjustment now this is quite a useful thing especially when there are no other cars around so for example i'm doing 70 miles an hour down here at the moment there are no cars in my lane just coming up to a roundabout and I'm sure that someone's probably going to pull over to the right hand side in a second just because this lane goes straight but the car should recognize there's a roundabout coming up and start to slow down in preparation for it so as we come around the corner here upcoming and the car started to slow down now I'm actually going to put my foot on the brake here because it is an, a roundabout where potentially I might need to stop just like before but this does also work for turns and bends and that sort of thing so say i don't know you've got a motorway and there's a kind of a bit of a sharper bend the car actually knows what speed it should go around that bend to make it successfully so it can actually adjust the speed for you automatically again you can toggle this on and off if you don't want it to so here's the full list of things that it can actually do it can do bends it can do roundabouts and t-junctions turns and exits and traffic jams ahead as well in conjunction with live traffic as long as you've got live traffic subscription now after this is a thing called active steering assist this works in conjunction with all the other things as well but what this can actually do is help give you small steering kind of inputs left and right or clockwise and anti-clockwise should i say um, based on the car in front and the white lines as there's no one behind me i'm going to purposely go over here on the left hand side and just watch the steering wheel now you're meant to have your hands on the steering wheel at all times because you should be in control of the car but i'm just going to intentionally move this over like this and watch it actually course correct and put me back see i'm actually going around a corner here look it's actually following the curvature of the road pretty cool right now i should say you should always have your hands on the steering wheel at all times because cars are very heavy and they can be extremely dangerous and especially as all these driving assistance systems and driving autonomous things start to come out there will be a point where the car can take over but these at the moment and certainly in 2024 and in this car with this system is all driving assistance tech 
So again, give you another example, the road actually starts to go around to the left here. Now you, again, you are meant to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but for this demonstration purposes and in a controlled way, I can show you that the car is actually just following it around to the left. The car will actually tell you off if you don't have your hands on the steering wheel like this, saying you need to put your hands on the wheel and will actually start to beep at you and even slow the car down, put the hazards on and even phone the SOS um, Mercedes-Benz Roadside Assistance Centre uh, just in case. So uh, yeah, you are meant to have your hands on the steering wheel. But you know, just in case that, you know, God forbid the driver just became unconscious for some reason, the car can actually almost roll to a stop and phone for help, which is just, as a car manufacturer, I think it's just amazing that they think of these things. So yes, in case you're wondering, the touch sensors are basically kind of in this perforated bit here. Uh, I think it's sort of right in the middle here. So this is where you're meant to hold the steering wheel. Obviously for some demonstration today, I'm just moving it down here so you can actually see and just so you can see it in action. But yes, hands are meant to be kind of in the middle, either 10 and two or kind of in this area just here. Now here's a good example. Say you're driving down the dual carriage rail motorway and I don't know, you said it's 70 and the person in front of you is not doing 70. They are doing 42 in a 70, which I would argue is a little bit dangerous. So you're probably gonna to want to overtake. Um, and no, I don't know that person. <laughs> they're just actually doing that speed. or well, they're doing more like 50 now. But um, yeah, say you wanted to overtake. All of course you can do is put your right indicator on but what happens if someone's in your blind spot? So this is where another safety system comes into its play called Active Blind Spot Assist. Now the word active there plays a very important part. A few Mercedes that I've certainly seen have blind spot assist, so that is a red warning triangle in your mirror. So if you look really, really closely, there is a uh, car just about to go into my blind spot, just over here, and the right hand side there on the bottom right of the mirror will go red, just like that. And if you go to indicate, it'll beep at you and flash at you. I've got red warning in the head-up display, the ambient light flashed as well, and the red triangle and the beep. So if you don't see that, then, well, <laughs> all these uh, safety assistance systems just to help make life a little bit easier. Now, active blind spot assist can even work in some scenarios as well. So say you're parked up at the side of the road, for example, and there's a bike coming or another car and you go to open your door, it can even beep at you as you move your hand to the door in some cars, if not as soon as you've opened the handle. So it'll beep and flash at you to get your attention to not go any further because opening that door fully, you could hit someone or the, should I say they could hit you. Again, the whole driving assistance package is all about safety. Now, in addition to all of this, there is another thing called active lane keeping assist. And this actually has improved over the years and is actually standard on quite a lot of cars these days. So this isn't unique to the driving assistance package, but I have noticed it is a lot smoother and especially a car like this. So again, another example here, we've got a solid white line on the left hand side and a dashed lane marking on the right hand side. Now this is a 70 road, but just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna stay at 50. So this is the thing here. What happens if you sway out of lane? Well, active steering assist and of course, some other systems in the car can actually bring you back into lane. So I'm gonna intentionally go over to the left here like this. And the car will tell you off and I've got red lines on there and it's brought me back. So if you happen to notice that really quickly in the head-up display, there was a red line on the white bit there, just in the middle of the road. It came up on the screen here as well to say I'd gone over the lane and started to steer me back. Active Lane Change Assist is also part of the Driving Assistance Package too, but this was removed from most countries and cars due to United Nations regulations a few years ago. But now it's back. Now important to note, this only works in certain situations, for example, on a motorway, so it won't work here on a dual carriageway. So I'll show it later when we're on the motorway, where we put all of these systems to the test at the same time and really put it through its paces. Now there still are a few more things to go through in terms of the driving assistance package, so it's not over yet, but I just wanted to touch on a few more things in terms of driving autonomy. A few of you have mentioned before, how far can you drive without needing to touch anything? Now to clarify, as I have mentioned a couple of times, this is an assistance system. So 
have a look at the e-brochure that Mercedes-Benz make and type in the word assist. Look how many times it comes up on this one page alone. And there's a reason for it because all these things help assist the driver. They do not drive for you. I just want to make that very, very clear. There are actually different driving autonomy levels and they range from about I guess level zero where you don't have anything, from level one all the way to level five. A level five would be like a pod you would just get into and it just takes you to where you want to go without a steering wheel or without pedals, which kind of sounds a bit scary, but another topic for another day, I think. Mercedes-Benz Tech in this one, everything in level two pretty much, and then a few extra things in level three that I've seen some of their press articles about, uh, where, you know, in certain garages, they can literally summon the car and it can arrive literally uh, where you, the entrance is, I guess. So yeah, pretty cool. Well, I did say there were a few more things left. So uh, yes, there's a few extra things on the driving assistance package that sadly I can't personally test just because it would put myself or the car in danger. And sadly, the price of this car, I'm not willing to do that. Uh, these would be things such as active brake assist. So this is actually the red warning triangle that you'll see when you get really close to a car in front. Now this can actually be adjusted using the multimedia system in the car. And basically, if you're approaching an object or some stationary traffic or the car thinks you're going to have a collision with something, it can actually help apply the brakes to prevent a crash. Uh, you can see why I'm not going to test that out right now. <laughs> Maybe one day I might be able to test it out, certainly in, the, in a closed environment. But yeah, I will not be testing it out on public roads. Next one after this is active evasive steering assist. Now, again, I can't sadly try this out, but a really good example right now, there's actually a few ponies and horses right now, but say you're driving down this road here like this, and I don't know, a horse just literally runs out in the middle of the road, or there's one standing there and you didn't even realize. If you go to steer out of the way, what a lot of people do, because they don't usually do those high intense maneuvers, they'll actually oversteer and then try and counteract and then they'll spin out and end up in on the grass or something like that. But what evasive steering assist can actually do is when you go to do that maneuver, it memorizes the movement that you've just done, knows where the object is because of the system in the car, and they'll actually put the same level of steering back in to get you back on course after you've gone past the object. Pretty cool. And must take a lot of calculations from the uh, system to do it. But yeah, that is evasive steering assist. Now the other one is active emergency stop assist. Now again, it's very difficult to show this off um, because the way this system works is that you actually need lane markings in the road and ideally a car in front as well. And um, I don't want to annoy anyone around me. <laughs> Basically what would happen if you had everything on and you were driving down the road and say you took your hands off the steering wheel, or God forbid, became unconscious or something. What the car can do is actually warn you, you need to put your hands on the steering wheel. It will beep at you, continue beeping at you, and then what it'll actually do is start to slow the car down and even bring you to a complete stop in the middle of the road. Now doing this as well, it also puts the hazards on to warn others around that something's not quite right, hopefully to get their attention. But yes, it can even do that. And to top it off as well, it will even phone the Mercedes-Benz emergency roadside assistance team how mental is that? That's crazy. Honestly, the level of tech that Mercedes-Benz put in their cars, and especially the driving system system, is just amazing. You can see actually why it's that expensive. It has just all these extra features on top of the active distance assist Astronic, which is the main thing people want, but all these other things just help make that system even better. So the last two things of this driving assistance package is PreSafe Plus and Impulse Side. Now, again, I'm not going to be demonstrating these just because this requires you to pretty much have a crash. What this system does is actually help make the interior as nice as possible for a crash <laughs> in, the, in a way of putting it. So one thing it will do is shut all the windows really quickly it will shut the sunroof. Another thing it will do is also prep the seat to be in the best position for a crash. It will tighten the seat belts. And in some models of Mercedes as well, it will also play a very high pitched sound on the speaker system to prep your eardrum ready for the sound of the crash. <laughs> oh, and the airbags going off, of course, as well. Uh, can't forget those. So yeah. Mercedes-Benz just really go to town with this sort of tech and I know this isn't in every car but yeah this is why the driving assistance package is 
you know, it's up there in price because it has so many of these things and so many of these features. A crash is not a nice thing to be in. I've been in a couple myself before and uh, thankfully they're at lower speeds, but yes, you don't really want to be in one. And if you are in one, just having the car cocoon you ready for said impact. I mean, out of any car out there, an S-Class is probably the safest car to be in, for sure. I mean, any Mercedes-Benz is really. I mean, that's what, one of the reasons why I drive them because they their priorities for their cars are up there in terms of safety. But certainly in a car like an S-Class or driving assistance package, yeah, definitely one of the safest ones out there. Right then guys, this is the final section on the driving assistance package. So to put everything that I've just mentioned and gone through, through its paces, we are joining the nearest motorway to me, which is the M27, from two lanes into three. But yeah, this is literally it. You can just cruise at these speeds, and of course the car will react at different times. So what I'll do, I'll cut this bit up, because you know what motorway driving's like. <laughs> you can be sat on motorways for hours at a time. I'll cut this bit up when something happens. So, we're staying at 70 at the moment with cruise control on. Immediately, I'm just gonna put my right indicator on and move over, just because there's people joining the motorway. But the car, of course, knows it's 70s. So it's gonna stick at 70. Of course, it's, its eyes are like looking ahead all the time. So it won't know of any joining traffic or anything like that. So you'll, of course, have to intervene and move over in good time. So back over to the left-hand lane. Make sure you don't be a middle lane hogger. So instantly in front now, it's detected the car here, uh, the very muddy car in front. And we were doing 70, but now we're doing 60 from the looks of it. Yeah, 60 miles an hour. Good economical speed, but of course, if you need to go faster, move over to the other lane. And again, I haven't touched the brake or accelerator pedal since joining the motorway. So yeah, at the moment, it's just kind of driving itself or following the car in front, essentially. So yeah, I could move over to the right-hand lane right now, but blind spot assist has just come on because there is a person right there. And if I indicated, it would beep and flash at me, but like what you saw earlier. Well, there's a slight bend coming up here. Again, you should have your hands on the wheel, but just for this demonstration and in the controlled way, uh, I will take my hands off the steering wheel in a second and you'll see it will slowly turn around to the right. So I would say the straight bit probably ends about here. So let's just take my hands off here. You'll see it will just follow around to the right, following that car just as it is. And again, the car will tell me off in a second saying, hey, you should have your hands on the wheel, pay attention. In a few more seconds, it will bring up. There we go. Well, literally straight away. So yeah, touch sensors are literally just here. As soon as you do that, it'll remove that message. So again, my feet are down here. I haven't still touched the pedals. They're hovering there just in case I need to intervene. But that car, I didn't even realize, has actually sped up um, and is actually doing the, um, the speed limit now. So um, everyone who's passing is actually speeding. <laughs> Happens all the time in the motorway anyway. Now there are cars joining here on the left, so I'm gonna move over to the right-hand side. So again, all the traffic up here is slowing. Again, I still haven't touched the pedals. You know, I've done several miles now. They're there just in case. I'm moving back here just to prove a point, but again, it's just staying at that locked on speed there. Car pulling in here has detected that and will maintain the speed because it doesn't need to slow down because that one's going faster. All these calculations that this system's doing it's so clever. And of course, these things, these gantries, if they had a speed limit reduction in, then of course the car would slow down as well. So it's just all these things combined to make your life so much easier. Now guys, the final one, of course, was active lane change assist. As I said, it has been regulated over the past few years, so sadly hasn't been available on every car that has driving assistance package, but it is back. And the way it works is basically as you are, you know, behind a car that's doing under the speed limit. So I've set it to 70 and we're currently doing 60 because that's what the car in front's doing. As long as it's clear behind me, which it now is, all you do is just dab the indicator once and it will go lane change to the right and it will make that maneuver for you. Now, it's actually got really angry with me there because I had my hands off the steering wheel. I just wanted to illustrate what it was doing, but yeah, it will do it and I'm glad to see it's back because that was such a cool feature before. Well, guys, I think uh, that concludes this week's video. So thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out, of course, to Mercedes-Benz UK for loading me this lovely S-Class 
uh, for me to make this video so thank you so much I'm just so glad the weather was okay because <laughs> it was certainly raining this morning but guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button and thank you so much for watching until next time see you then